Hey YouTube, this is Robin Investor. Hope you had a great week of trading. As always, I really appreciate your support. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to learn about investing, subscribe to this channel. Today I'm going to talk about my Robinhood portfolio. Currently at $338,596. Scrolling down a bit, you can see a cash position of about $10. I actually don't put as much cash into this portfolio just because I have a separate high yield savings account at about 4% yield, uh, which is higher than this 1.5%. Um, so about $40,000 in that savings account um, so that when there's opportunities to buy, then I can put that into the market. Ethereum, I have one in my Robinhood portfolio and then more in my Coinbase account. Ethereum, I have um, I bought in about $630 per share, up 186%. I do believe, believe in the blockchain technology and decentralized finance, but the thing about cryptocurrency, it's very risky. There's no um, revenue generated, so it's hard to put a value on it, uh, but I do plan to continue holding this long-term and do not plan on adding any more. Taking a look at ETF, Vanguard S&P 500 ETF tracks 500 largest US companies um, this very low expense ratio and high liquidity, so it's easy to get in and out of this position. This makes up 4.84% portfolio, or $16,383. I'm up 49% on this position. Next is Vanguard Information Technology ETF, which tracks a lot of large technology companies. This makes up 5.18% portfolio, or $17,542. I'm up 173% on this position. My largest stock position is NVIDIA. This makes up 12.28% portfolio or $41,577, uh, 420% on this position. So NVIDIA, they make a lot of GPU chips and their growing business is the, the data centers. Um, so I do be believe that as AI continues to grow in demand. And you can see that a lot of applications like GPT, um, along with other um, AI chat tools, um, an application to vision computing. There's just so many applications to AI and I think NVIDIA benefits from that, um, being one of the largest GPU chip makers. Next is Apple, which makes a lot of consumer electronics like iPhone, Mac computers, iPad, tablets. They also have a growing business in the services business, and hopefully they release their VR, AR headset soon, so it's another, another category. Um, they also have wearable devices like Apple Watch and AirPods. This makes up 10.71% portfolio, or $36,261. I'm up 301% on this position. Next is Microsoft, which... Uh, invested in the OpenAI company, which is behind ChatGPT. And they plan to apply a lot of those, uh, the learning the language models into the their stack of productivity tools and development tools. This makes up 7.05% portfolio or $23,898, up 183% on this position. I'm definitely going to hold Microsoft long term just because I do think that they continue to innovate um, in year over year. Next is Amazon, which is big in e-commerce and Amazon Web Services. This makes up 6.33% portfolio or $21,437, uh, 1.86% of my portfolio on this position. So. Amazon hasn't really grown much in terms of their stock price. You can see at one point it was up to 183, um, but I think it's still undervalued and there's a lot of potential upside. Alphabet class A shares. This is the parent company at Google. Main revenue is uh, advertising, online ad ads. This makes up 2.86% portfolio or $9,687, up 82% on this position. And you can see that 
it did take a hit when there were a lot of announcements behind the, the GPT competitor, Bard. Um, and it didn't do as well, but um, we'll see how it continues to perform in terms of revenue. And I'm not just looking at their, their AI tool. Alphabet Class C shares do not have voting rights compared to Class A shares. This makes up 2.39% portfolio or $8,092, up 69% on this position. Next is Visa, which is big in payment processing. Makes up 4.53% portfolio or $15,346, up 90% on this position. Mercado Libre, so they're big e-commerce um, online payment company in Latin America. This makes up 3.86% portfolio or $13,064. I'm up 16.91% on this position. And I do believe that that market will continue to grow as um, more and more consumers are getting used to online transactions. Meta Platforms, which is a parent company of Facebook, um, Oculus, WhatsApp, and Messenger. This makes up 4.3% portfolio or $14,570, up 25% on this position. And you can see there's been a lot of volatility this past two years. And at one point it was $378, but it took a big dip end of 22 or end of, uh, yeah, early 2022. And then continued to dip and then it just had a recent uptick. I do believe in Meta long term just because it continues to connect all of us and it's a great um, online advertising tool. Johnson Johnson, big in the uh, healthcare space, whether it's medical devices, consumer health. Um, let's see, this makes up 2.78% portfolio or $9,431, up 25% on this position. Pretty solid dividend play, um, not much volatility, but uh, yeah, I plan to continue holding this long term. TSM, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. They make a lot of different uh, processor chips. This makes up 2.78% portfolio or $9,407, down 0.61% on this position. I do believe that TSM will continue to uh, grow as we continue to depend on technology and the hardware. United Health makes up 2.71% portfolio or $9,176. I'm up 179% on this position. This is uh, a lot of revenue is from um, insurance and consulting, make a big impact in the healthcare space. McDonald's had a lot of growth the past five years. There's been a lot of growth from their digital side. This makes up 2.57% portfolio or $8,692, up 80% on this position. Tencent, which is big in China, whether it's social media, gaming, or payment processing, makes up 2.52% portfolio or $8,529, down 9% on this position. So I know. Chinese stocks are risky, but I do uh, plan on holding this position long term just to get some exposure to it. Costco, which is a, a warehouse, retail, um, membership warehouse, retail uh, position company. Uh, this makes up 2.23% portfolio or $7,449 up 84% on this position. And as pricing of goods continue to increase, more and more uh, people see the value in Costco. Um, and I don't think Amazon has taken uh, market share from this just because it's hard to ship things in, in bulk efficiently. And um, that's why Costco continues to dominate in their their space. Home Depot, which is 
big in home improvement, makes up 1.94% portfolio, or $6,586. I'm up 58% on this position. Adobe, which is big in the content creation space, makes up 1.93% portfolio, or $6,541, down 7.53% on this position. As things continue to become digitized, I think Adobe will continue to benefit. Disney, it's been very volatile the past five years. One point, it was almost $200 per share. This makes up 1.89% portfolio or $6,411, down 9.78% on this position. Continue to do really well in um, their content. Um, but recently there's been a lot of, um, it's a big hit in terms of their parks and entertainment. Um, but hopefully with Bob Iger leading this company, it'll continue to pick back up. Boeing, which is big in the aerospace industry, makes up 1.8% portfolio or $6,090, down 9.84% on this position. CrowdStrike Holdings, which is a cybersecurity company, makes up 1.81% portfolio or $6,000. $137, down 13% on this position. Next is Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett's company. They have exposure to uh, companies like Apple and Kraft Heinz, Coca-Cola. It's a big holdings company. Makes up 1.8% portfolio or $6,009, up 69% on this position. Alibaba, which is like the Amazon of China, and they also have web services, makes up 1.77% portfolio or $6,008, down 51% on this position. So even though I'm down, I don't think I'm gonna sell at a loss and we'll continue to hold this long-term, hopefully it picks back up. Shopify, you can see it was very volatile and took a big dip since end of 2021. This is big in e-commerce. This makes up 1.62% portfolio or $5,477, down 44% on this position. PayPal, this is big in online payments, transactions. You can see at one point it was up to $300 per share, but now it's $72. I'm down 34% on this position. Makes up 1.3% portfolio or $4,397. Next is Block parent company is Square and Cash App, makes up 0.9% portfolio or $3,039, down 62% on this position. Next is AT&T, a big telecom company, makes up 0.95% portfolio or $3,205, down 49% on this position. So you can see my, some of my positions I'm down. Um, I might consolidate and liquidate some of them, but still haven't done that yet. Next is Nexera Energy, makes up 0.79% portfolio or $2,666, up 69% on this position. The Trade Desk is big in online advertising, makes up 0.55% portfolio or $1,852, up 75% on this position. Teladoc Health, this makes up 0.22% portfolio or $731, down 71% on this position. Twilio, which is another uh, tech company. Um, they have a lot of communication services and uh, APIs. Makes up 0.19% portfolio or $640, down 78% on this position. Last but not least is Baozhen, which is the Shopify of China. Makes up 0.16% portfolio or $536, down 87% on this position. So overall, I have some winners and some losers, but I do plan to continue holding most of my positions and I might make some changes to uh, the, the ones that are not doing well um, or don't have, don't have I don't see doing well in the long term. Um, that's all my portfolio. What companies are you holding? Comment down below. Remember to use my referral links below and both of us get $20 for using personal capital or free stock for using Robinhood. Uh, see you in the next video.